Hello, the purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about the Calvin cycle and give you a better idea for this process. Now, just like we did for the light dependent reactions, we'll have a diagram of this one on the board that we're using in class. But this is just a basic introduction to give you an idea for what's going on in this process and just to give you like a general overview of what we'll be discussing in class in a little bit more detail. Uh, to start off, I want to show you this picture from the textbook. And uh, immediately, I just want you to know right off the bat that I don't really like the way your book describes some of this stuff. And, and we're going to change it a little bit. Um, if you look at the first step, like it sort of breaks this down in, into four different parts. you got A, B, C, and D. And if we just read A, it says six carbon dioxide molecules are combined with six five-carbon molecules to produce 12 three-carbon molecules. I think this kind of description of the process reads almost like a math problem. You know, like the, the train leaves the station at 6 o'clock going 45 miles an hour. When does it get to station B? You know, and, and it just becomes kind of confusing. And part of the reason for the odd wording is I added these um, letters to the diagram. What these letters do they represent the actual biochemical name of the molecule. So these six five-carbon molecules, that's ribulose bisphosphate. So we've got the, the abbreviation for that there. The, the 12 three-carbon molecules is PGA. So like all of these things, they, they stand for different biochemical terms. So uh, am, am I going to expect you to know that this is phosphoglycerate? You know, no. Um, what I'm expecting you to know, though, is just the, uh, the abbreviation. So what this does for us is instead of calling this a 6,5-carbon molecule, which I think gets very confusing, we'll just call it RUBP. And, and that'll make this process a little bit easier. So we're going to get rid of this one from the book and then focus more just on um, the, the one that, that I kind of adapted a little bit. Now, as with all the cycles we've talked about, because after all this is the Calvin cycle, there's really no definitive starting or stopping point. Um, but with most things, I think it's easier if you remember it in a certain order. So we're going to consider this process as starting up here with, with the carbon dioxide being added. So if we follow like, around the diagram a little bit, what we're going to do is just end up counting the number of carbons that we have. So if you look at the very first portion of this, we've got a 6, 5 carbon molecule. So 6 times 5, for all the math whizzes out there, gives us 30 total carbons. Uh, what we add up here at the top is 6 CO2. So it's showing this sort of coming into the process. 6 CO2 has a total of 6 carbons, because each CO2 molecule only has 1. So what that gives us eventually is 12 three-carbon molecules, which if we're keeping score, 12 times 3 is 36. So really what we're seeing is the 30 carbons from RUBP plus the 6 carbons from the CO2 is giving us the 36-carbon PGA molecule. Now here's the problem with going from PGA to PGAL. Uh, PGA is in the wrong format. And this will make a lot more sense when we have the diagram on the board in class. But even though it's the right number of carbons, they're in the wrong shape, basically. They have to be rearranged in order to be in the proper shape for us to eventually remove sugar from it at the end. Rearranging those bonds takes energy. This energy comes from the ATP and the NADPH that was produced during the light dependent reactions. So you can see there's actually 12 ATP molecules and 12 NADPH molecules that get used up in this step. So even though when we get down to PGAL it still only has 36 carbons, they're in a new order than the ones above them. So I'll kind of put that down here. New order. Sorry, my handwriting is especially bad for some reason today. Um, now that we have uh, PGAL, the difference between that and PGA is that carbons can be removed from it. So if we look at this next step, it's taking out two three-carbon molecules. So that's a total of six carbons. My goodness, do that one a little bit better. So a total, as I said before, of six carbons. There we go. And uh, if you remember the structure of glucose, it's C6H12O6. So these six carbons, those are the C6 portion of that formula. 
The last bit of this is what makes it a cycle. Since we have 36 carbons in PGAL, we remove 6 to make our 6 carbon molecule. That leaves us with 10 3 carbon molecules. That leaves us with 30 carbons here. The difference between PRUBP and RUBP is like the same problem we had between PGA and PGAL. If you notice, they both have 30 total carbons. Again, they're just in the wrong order. This one I think is easy to see because this one is 10 groups of 3 to give us 30, but it actually has to be in 6 groups of 5. So again, energy is used to rearrange those. Some of the ATP molecules that we were making during the light dependent reactions are used to rearrange those 10 groups of 3 into 6 groups of 5. We get back to RUBP and the whole cycle can start again. So uh, this cycle really requires two inputs. It requires carbon dioxide from the air around the plant, and it requires energy from the light dependent reactions in the form of ATP and the NADPH that's being used. So hopefully this made it a little bit easier when we broke it down into thinking about total numbers of carbons instead of thinking about it in terms of you know six groups of five and, and all that stuff, how the book kind of describes it. Uh, and the last page will just kind of recap some of the major things, and uh, you should be all set. So we're just going to recap some things we were talking about with the Calvin cycle. The first thing is that it uses ATP and NADPH, which are coming from the light-dependent reactions, which we'll just abbreviate as LDR. It's also taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere around it, and it's using those things to make glucose. What we're left with at the end is ADP and NADP+. Plus. Those things go back to the light-dependent reactions again in order to be recharged. So to kind of bring everything full circle, when we first started talking about this chapter, I used this diagram, this picture, which acts as like an overview for everything, which, there we go. I'll put those notes back there in a second. Um, but if we look at this picture, the, uh, this is where everything started for us. We talked about how part of this process happens in the light-dependent reactions. The other part is the Calvin cycle. In the light-dependent reactions, oxygen is produced. Remember we talked about that when the water molecules split. The oxygen ends up leaving because it's a neutral particle. It can go right through the membrane. Then we produce ATP and NADPH. That's used in the Calvin cycle combined with carbon dioxide. We'll talk in class about where the heck this water comes from because we haven't really gotten to that yet. Um, but then the, a the ATP and NADPH are used to make the sugars on the other side, which leave us with ADP and NADP+, plus, which go back to the light-dependent reactions in order to be recharged. So hopefully now you're seeing why we started with this, because truly these things are, are what make the process. That's what makes it a cycle. That's what connects the two halves of this entire thing together. So put those notes back up here for you guys. So you can reference those. Um, and that's pretty much it for the, the Calvin cycle. So this is a, a good introduction for you. We'll definitely build on this in class in order to further develop your understanding with the diagram that we'll be using on the board. So as always, uh, thank you for watching, and remember to answer the questions on the video.